Alrighty, this is just going to be a very quick tutorial on the diagnostic evaluation of articulation and phonology, the screener. So this screener is appropriate for a child who is three years, zero months, all the way up to eight years, 11 months. And for this particular test for administration, you just need this one record form and then your stimulus book as well. Of course, as always, it comes with the manual, which is always important to make sure that you read that prior to administering the test. Even after watching this video, it's always good to make sure that you know what you're doing. So this is a really easy test. It's very straightforward. Uh, you have your screener and the actual test all in one, one manual and in one stimulus book as well. So you want to make sure that you go to the diagnostic screen. These are your directions. So this is what you should be looking at this side and this is what your client will be looking at. As always, you want to kind of angle it so that if you are right-handed, you're sitting it this way so that you are taking notes this way behind this so you have your directions here. The client sees the, the picture here. So this is a really great screener, nice and easy. All the directions are here. The very first time that you go through, all you are doing is you are just asking the client to name the pictures. And it's not necessarily a scoring that's happening. All you're doing is writing down exactly what the client does. So the IPA is here for you in case you have forgotten your IPA or that's not your strong suit. So what you will do is just indicate whether the child actually produces the word that way. So you will just say to the child, we're going to look at some pictures and I want you to name them. All right, so are these teeth or eyes is something that you could say um, as a cue if necessary. So if the child, for instance, gives you the wrong name of the picture, you could give them an option as a stimulus. All right, so this is the first one. It's a watch, as you will see on the record form, watch is here. And so you will just go through all 10 of the words. So that's the first time through the book. Once you go through those 10 pictures, flipping away from yourself towards the child. So these are your 10 pictures that you will go through with the child. And just saying, what is this? What is this? Just like any other articulation test. Okay. Once you get to this, what you will see is now your view has something different and you're going to look for stimulability. So if the child produces the sound in any of these areas correctly, you do not need to check for stimulability. However, if they are, have errors on any of their sounds, you wanna come down to this part of the record form and look for the error patterns and then you're going to see if the child is stimulable for those particular sounds. So again, your directions are right here for you in teal. I'm going to say something, you say it after me. You give the child the sound, see if they can say it, have the kid uh, write down whether that child was able to produce it or not. Then the last part for this particular screen is that you're going to go through the pictures again. So you're again, just flipping that book away from you, just keep flipping away from you. And again, your directions are here. We're going to look at the same pictures and I want you to name them again. When I show you the picture, tell me what you see. And you're going to go through those pictures again. And what you're going to do this time is you're going to indicate whether the child says it the same way or in a different way. So just indicating whether they produce it the same or the different way as how they produced it the first time. Okay, now let's talk about the scoring, how this is actually what you're gonna do once you have those responses. Once you've indicated whether it's the same or different, once you've indicated all of their patterns, whether they're able to be, stim if they're stimulable for them or not, you're going to write down here the number of items that were produced differently, the number of items that were produced the same. You do single word inconsistent score, which is different and then, so the, the, sorry, let me just actually just show you the math equation is right down here. So here is the math equation for it. So you've got same divided by, sorry, different divided by same plus different multiplied by 100. So make sure of course that you do the ones in parentheses first, the way that that's how that math equation works. So you need to add first, then divide, then multiply. And that's gonna give you that response, which then goes on the front of your form 
just like a lot of these other tests that we have, you're always going to be putting that criteria. That will give you a number and it's going to let you know if that meets the criteria or not. So is it less than or greater than 50%? So that's where that's going to go. You also have all of these patterns in here. This is what's kind of nice about this screener is it breaks things down for you, whether it's gliding, defrication, stopping, things like that. So that's all here. That additionally is on the front. So what's really important is that now you want to indicate whether this child is producing things that are age appropriate or not age appropriate, right? So you're gonna find their age and you're going to say based on the patterns or based on the errors that we saw, were these appropriate or acceptable for this age or not acceptable? So if they're acceptable, it's no big deal. We're just gonna circle what's acceptable. If they're not acceptable for this age, you're gonna indicate that down here. Same for phonological patterns as well. So if we see gliding at, at any age that we have here until the age of five, six, that's acceptable. We're just gonna circle that. Any patterns that they're doing that are not age appropriate, we're going to just put a check mark here and write down what they're doing. You also wanna say, do they meet that criteria or do they not meet that criteria? So checking which box is appropriate. Remember that score that was in here? That's the score that you're gonna get from right here, right? And then you're going to circle your diagnostic summary. So just circle which one matches. Also, if at any point you need a little help with this, you don't remember how to do something, you're just going to go to the tab in the manual that says Diagnostic Screener. This has all of the information. It starts on page 15. And as with most manuals, at least all the ones I've seen, there are examples here as well. So if you don't remember how to do them, the book has really good examples on how to complete this particular screener. And then also how to fill out the summary. So very straightforward, very basic screener. Hopefully that helps. Screeners are really helpful because they allow you to do a quick look at the child to see whether we need to do a full evaluation or not.